the chain down, Gidrich and the ships can get through. Wait your orders. You brought your weapons and armor. Hi, Raven Tamer. Good. Now we dig in and wait for our friends. Well met, old friend. When the chance arrived to lodge an axe in the sod of Wessex, you thought of me. Such an honor. Is everything else in place, Eivor? Are we ready to take Rusus then? Rally our army. We will drag this mouse from his hole. Oh, 
Great. Flank the idiot. 
Before I let you take this fortress! to take this fortress, Dane. Alfred's army will smear your innards across the battlements. We are not here for stone and sand, Thane Tetland. I shit on you! You and your toy gods! I will not bow to you like some puppet's lord! I would rather die! How much will your king pay us to keep your sniveling head upon your neck? An army marches upon us from the south. A holy man from St. Hadrian's Priory, backed by a field. Ah, then, Abbot. Kinnebert? God be praised! If riches are all you care about, the Church has it in abundance. If the terms are fair, you'll have your freedom. A chest or two of silver for a shit-stained sewer rat. Stay quiet, or I'll not be able to stop my friend from slitting your throat. Ah! <laughs> Watch yourself, heathen! You handle it too roughly! You will die for the indignities you've showered upon me, Dane! I mean no offense, Thane. You're only a hefty ransom to me. Nothing more. This is why you batter down my gates, kill my men for a purse of grubby coin? You have no honor! Enough! I'll return you to the Saxons. This good man go, or suffer an iron sickness. And what do you offer us in return? Your lives? We lost many good men storming this keep. It will not be in vain, Christ's slave. Twenty chests of silver. Give them all they ask, Kinnebert. A hefty sum that will leave God's coffers hollow. I cannot give it up without some assurance. Tedmund, you extort me in return for my life? You were swiftly met, Abbot. Not long after these... these scallious worms took my fort. On the Lord's bidding, Tedmund, at prayer, a terrible vision befell me. A host of heathens, your life in danger. A coincidence I find rather... <coughs> rather ominous, Abbot. Do you... <coughs> God help you, man. Are you well? Uh, I need... I need air! He's dead. The work of poison, no doubt. No, 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 no! Rouse the man! 
He cannot be dead! He must not be dead! Poison? How does the man die of poison in our arms? Many great kings and paranoids have carried poison in times of war, as an alternative to capture and ransom. A catastrophe! Alfred will choose another and... By the saints! Alfred! How will I explain this to the king? We followed this road to its end, Cunebert. You may not like where it led, but you owe us our half of the bargain. You shall have your paladin. I need a day. Return to my abbey tomorrow, and you shall... Oh, dear, oh dear. These delays are grinding at my bones. We should abandon Cunebert. Find full care ourselves. Peace, Eivor. Speak with Giedrich and relieve him of his oath. I'll meet you at Cunebert's abbey. Fought like beasts, escaped from your hell today, Giedrich. Your oath to me is fulfilled. It was good to stand shoulder to shoulder with you against the pox dogs of Wessex. May our friendship endure. This tangle, Briar, of Christians and Lords means nothing to me. I'm here for Sigurd. I understand. When you find him again, come see me. We'll feast and sing with mead and friendship to warm us. Agreed. Say well met, brother, but I cannot shake off the needle itch of dread. Is something wrong? I followed the abbot here, kept him in my sight. But the monks, his servants, I have seen nothing of them. Dead? I do not think so. But there is no good here in this grave hush. And where is the abbot now? In his quarters. Come, and be on your guard. Does this have the stench of betrayal to you? Why would the godly shepherd ally with the heretic? Cunebert is a man who craves power and position. With Tetman dead, he must find it somewhere else. There is truth in that. Keep your eyes and blade sharp. Cunebert. Your guests have arrived. Come. Supper's ready. The dear abbot sent me a warm invitation, said my friends were eager to meet with me. It's early for supper, I know. But Kinnebert's ale goes so well with roasted lamb and cinnamon blueberry peas. I couldn't resist. Where is my brother? Is he... is he not here? Mon Dieu. I never told him. Kill her, and we'll never find Sigurd. Sit, Ava. Eat. And let me tell you the tale of a man who talks with gods. You mock me. I've killed for much less. Of course you have. Isn't that the way of this ugly world? We call the sheep and thin the flock as we see fit, you and I. Most who walk the earth are little more than talking blood bladders, wasted flesh. But not Sigurd. Sigurd is something else. Sigurd has been touched. He is deified. The gods, they speak through him. You lured him in with that lie. Your words are bile and blight. You should have listened, Avar. I tried to tell you. The gods are real, and their power is within our grasp. Ah! You will never find him. Not till I have had my fill. 
to old friends. This really is delicious, Kidabert. Is it cloves I taste? Well, that concludes supper. Kill them, and bring their bodies to my sanctum in Canterbury. They will be upon us soon. Maybe there is another way out. Fulke let slip that her sanctum is at Canterbury. She did. And with no cause. I'd approach the place with caution. It may be a lie. It may be. But it's the only lead we have. I hope all this innocent sacrifice is worth the trouble. It's Sigurd. My brother. Of course it is. Then come. Let us dive into the maw of death. I was never keen on seeing my winter years. This will not be for nothing, Eivor. We will find Sigurd. It's not just him. I want Fulke to suffer. It rounds on us at every turn, snarling like a cornered dog. I begin to despair of ever settling here. Perhaps the stars write your path, and you will never have a home here. Do you miss the land of your birth? I have long been away, but it is fiercely beautiful beneath the vanity, arrogance, and pettiness of men. I should like to see it. You could if you wish. My father was an architect, a builder of wonders. The great mosque of Samara. His masterpiece, another man, who played the Caliphate's game better took the credit. He was exiled, and died in poverty. Your faith sours. What of loyalty? Shared stories round the hearth. Warm nights, bodies, and the tender love of another. There are some who are worthy. A scant few that tower above the solid mass. Men and women of vision and valor. Sigurd is one such man. He is. Fulke isn't wrong on that score. I fear for him, Basim. I cannot rest until he's safe. Nor will I, my friend. The practice of learning has waned considerably in England since the days of the Romans. 
burnt books they still have, they keep locked away in their churches, hidden from the eyes of common folk. Thralls and churls cannot read. What would be the point? They could learn. The church could teach them. So much of human history would be open to them. Aristotle, Pythagoras, Euclid, ancient knowledge lost to all but a few hard-headed men of the cloth. You have studied these works yourself? In my youth, I was consumed with a passion for understanding. I spent many hours a day in the House of Wisdom in Baghdad. A seminary? A great library, full of the greatest learning of mankind. For a boy seeking answers, it holds many riches. One day, I was sitting cross-legged, devouring a study by the great astronomer al Khwarizmi. With the swiftness belying his years, the papers were plucked from my grasp by the great man himself. His presence stole my voice. He was kind and open-hearted. He showed me such scientific wonders. What did you learn there? Calendars and calculations placing the sun, moon, and five planets. Equations that crackled and sparkled with divine intelligence. I asked the great man, is this what it is to know God? You saw your God's hand in the rooms. I found wisdom, and I have been searching for more ever since. There is great vastness outside ourselves, Eivor. Most only notice a few grains of sand. But see, like Sigurd Pepper. That's the one! Kill! only notice a few grains of sand, but some, like Sigurd, I believe, see the endless flow of the hourglass. What you see in Sigurd, is this what Fulke sees as well? I believe it is. We will find no friends in Canterbury, so try not to draw attention. This place reeks of the piety of priests. This land of summer, mists, and forests, dreaming darkly. I see secrets, and I want to know England, all of it. And yet it rounds on us at every turn, snarling like a cornered dog. I begin to despair of ever settling here. Sigurd will be well guarded. Caution and subtlety should be our path. Ready? Follow me. Fulke give us her sanctum. She baits us. Cocksure and arrogant. But she cannot see failure in her path. Her fearful wit would say otherwise.
Can't do this alone. This must be the way to Fulke's Sanctum. Riddled with the stench of her. Help me, Basim. Sigurd is within. and demons. Tell me that you found something. Anything we can use! I may have! A fortress in Sussex. The order trained soldiers there. We must be sure. Secret is running out of time. Anything else? Documents of interest to the Hidden Ones. Hytham will surely want to look. But for Sigurd, Porchester is our only lead. <sighs> if he is in Porchester Castle, we'll need a massive army to crack its walls. I have many friends in England now. If I call on them, they will come. They will. Basim, she severed his arm clean off. Can a man survive such a loss? Physically, he can. Mentally, it's hard to say. So much stress can drive a man to despair. If you suggest he might take his own life as Tetman did, banish that idea. I must tell my people at the settlement that their Jarl remains a captive. They will not take it well. We will not fail again, Eivor. 
I'll scout ahead and send word to the settlement when I know more of Porchester. Be ready.